Presidente Keller. Mrs. Keller, you have the floor on behalf of the Greens group. Let's try and respect, uh, respect speaking times, please. Dear President, dear colleagues, the state of this union today is defined by our failure at the external borders, by the fact that we let children sleep on the streets, that we refuse to give water to those in need, that we send police against those fleeing from war and violence, that we knowingly let people die and drown at sea. And this is a very shameful state that we're in. It was exactly the ex historic experience of people suffering from war, destruction and displacement that motivated Europeans in the first place to build the EU. What a sad moment in our common history that we stand idle in the face of so much suffering on our doorsteps. And this shameful situation is our collective responsibility as Europeans. Greece has failed for many years to produce conditions in refugee camps that would at least be acceptable. Countries like Netherlands and Austria that told Greece not to allow refugees on the mainland and actively wanted to see terrible conditions in order that it might deter people fleeing from war and terror. Countries like Hungary that refused to accept anyone in need. But it is also true that the EU itself has turned a blind eye, has not insisted and has given up hope. And I urge you, Commission President, to take up the fight with the Member States, to make it a top priority to help people in need and not to give in to this disastrous state we're in. Let us demonstrate that we are courageous and that we're wholeheartedly European. And we have demonstrated that we can be courageous and lead the way forward towards progress. Together, the European Union will mobilize, mobilize the means and funds to counter the worst of the economic effects of the pandemic, prove that we can be a strong union indeed. And the agreement of July has a lot of shortcomings, but the signal of sticking together and finding a solution was very important. And now it is the time to bring the recovery fund as well as the long-term budget into reality. Right now, we set the standards for how we will spend the money and what we will spend it on. And EU funds have to foster EU values and up uphold the fundamentals of EU treaties. And there can be no discount on the rule of law, not for Hungary, not for Poland, not for any other country. And I want to thank you for your strong words on the rights of LGBTI people. And I would like to ask you to follow up on those strong words with a measure that the Commission has in its hands, namely an infringement procedure, because zones free of the essence of humanity cannot be accepted. Public money should also not enhance the climate crisis. And this sounds obvious, but unfortunately, it is still the case that the EU budget subsidizes fossil fuels. And the common agricultural policy, as well as the trade policy, finally need to align with the Green Deal and the biodiversity strategy. For the next seven years, we need a European climate budget. It is good to see, Commission President, that you have set out a new and higher emission reduction target of at least 55%. We welcome that, and I'm sure there have been a lot of pressures uh, to try to prevent you from doing so. These new targets are an important step forward, but any greenwashing with creative calculations would render them null and void. And even then, we know from a scientific point of view, at least minus 55% would not be enough. But luckily, we have in this House, in our Environment Committee, a good climate law that has been prepared. And I hope this will come to the conclusion soon, as time is of essence. The climate cannot be negotiated with, so we better move fast. And let me finish by saluting the incredible courage that we see by the people in Belarus demonstrating of the country, uh, on the streets of the country these weeks, especially the women. We see you. We see your wish for freedom, for democracy, and to define your own future. And your courage is inspirational. From the freedom fighters in Belarus, to the environmental activists in the Amazon, to the democracy protesters in Bulgaria, they're all looking at the European Union to uphold fundamental rights, to defend pluralism, and to enforce the highest climate and environmental standards. 
both in Europe and beyond. And these are high standards to live by. And it's, it is up to all of us to make sure that we fulfill them. Thank you. Mm. Grazie.